The 2022 rookie quarterback class has been very interesting as we examine it two years later. The most unlikely guy has become the best player from the class, and the guys near the top have either been disappointing or have already flamed out. It's been one of the worst classes in NFL history, and in today's video, we're to take a look back at it. We're to go through every quarterback who was drafted and talk about what has happened to them since. But before we get started, if you're a big football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player team topic or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and examine the 2022 NFL rookie quarterback class. All right, so the first guy we have to talk about is the guy who was taken in the seventh round, Brock Purdy. He's so far been the most successful quarterback from the 2022 draft class, which is honestly very surprising. He was the last pick of the entirety of the draft, and coming out of Iowa State, he was definitely good for Cyclone standards, but no one thought he had NFL potential, and he was by no means a superstar at the college level either. He ended up getting drafted to the 49ers, and he became the third string quarterback behind both Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. He didn't play in any games until week 13, as he would have to come in in relief. He ended up throwing for over 200 yards and two touchdowns in that game, and after that, he was the starting quarterback, and he hasn't let up since. In his first year, he finished with 1,300 yards with 14 touchdowns, and that was only in nine games. In 2023, he was once again the starter, and this even led to them trading Trey Lance to the Cowboys. This happened before the season started, and they went all in on Purdy. He ended up having a spectacular 2023 season, as he threw for 4,200 yards with 31 touchdowns and only had 11 picks. They ended up becoming the number one seed in the NFC, and he took them all the way to the Super Bowl in his first year as a starter. No one expected Purdy to do anything, as he was deemed Mr. Irrelevant, but so far, he's become the only relevant name really in this class. Secondly, we have to talk about Skylar Thompson. He was an interesting prospect, as he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, which was pretty good for Kansas State standards. They typically get developmental players, but Thompson came in and did a lot for them. He played under both Chris Kleiman and Bill Snyder, but he was an older prospect when he eventually went to the NFL. He was 25 years old and also had experienced a decent amount of injuries. He ended up going in the seventh round to the Miami Dolphins, and he was good enough to be an eventual backup. Funny enough though, he actually got a chance. While he was the backup to Tua, he played well enough in the preseason for them to keep him on their active roster. Once Teddy Bridgewater got hurt in week six, Skyler was actually called into duty, and he went 19 of 33 with an interception. They lost badly, and Thompson was not great, but he did get a chance to start as a rookie. In seven games, he threw for 534 yards with a touchdown and three picks. He ended up getting sacked a lot too, and he ended as the team's starting quarterback in the 2022 playoffs, but they lost to the Bills. Thompson hasn't done anything and probably won't do anything in the NFL since then, but he has started a couple of games, and it's weird how the seventh round has worked so far. The next guy we need to talk about is Chris Aladokun. He really was not that big of a name coming out of college, as I actually remember him when he was at USF, but he would eventually transfer to South Dakota State, where he made a big name for himself. He was taken in the seventh round by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and to many, this was a very surprising pick. His journey career took him to USF, Samford, and South Dakota State, but he was an athletic prospect who had a good arm. He also spent a long time in the NCAA, so he had plenty of experience. He wouldn't spend much time with the Steelers either, as he was cut early in the preseason and didn't end up logging any snaps in the 2022 preseason at all. A week after he was cut though, he was signed to the practice squad of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's been with them ever since, but is only a reserve or a practice squad type of player. In the 2023 preseason, he played in all their games, passing for 181 yards and a touchdown. He's still with the Chiefs and signed another contract, but he'll likely never do anything in the NFL. He is preparing for his third ring though, so in that department, he's been super successful. Now as we move on, we get to the quarterbacks who had legitimate hype. The first one is Sam Howell. He was originally committed to Florida State coming out of high school, but after Mac Brown was hired at North Carolina and Walt Bell went to UMass, he decided to flip to North Carolina. He'd win the starting job right away and would really show out pretty quickly. He had a defining game against Clemson and then had a marvelous career at North Carolina. While his junior season was a bit down, he was still drafted in the fifth round by the Commanders. At one point, he was considered a top 10 pick, but honestly, he was a steal in the later rounds. Eventually, though, his talent went out as he became the starting quarterback for the Commanders, and this came after they were eliminated from the playoffs. They really had nothing to lose. In that first game, he ended up throwing for 169 yards in the touchdown. Despite the Commanders bringing in Jacoby Brissett, Sam won the starting role for 2023 and was named the starting quarterback. In 2023, Sam would end up struggling, but he did throw for 3,900 yards with 21 touchdowns and 21 interceptions. That was ridiculously high, and while he started 17 games, he was no longer the guy. 
They're probably going to end up taking Drake May or Jaden Daniels, so he was traded to the Seattle Seahawks, where he'll be competing for the job with Geno Smith. I doubt he'll end up winning it, but Howell has gotten a chance, but has not been able to take advantage of it. The next guy is Bailey Zappi. He came from a high-flying offense at Western Kentucky, but before that, he was an absolute superstar at Houston Baptist. Alongside NCAA record-breaking receiver Jareth Stearns, the two would transfer from Houston Baptist up to Western Kentucky and definitely made a name for themselves. He put up big numbers and was one of those guys that could maybe cut it in the NFL. That's why he was taken in the fourth round of the draft by the New England Patriots, and he'd eventually see his first action in week four of 2022. Both Mac Jones and Brian Hoyer got hurt, and against the Packers, he ended up throwing for 99 yards. He was named the starter for the following week, and things were actually looking up for him. He ended up throwing for 309 yards and two touchdowns against the Browns, and some thought he was the future of the franchise. But when Mac Jones came back, he ended up becoming the backup, and then would struggle like the rest of the team. He ended 2022 as the backup, and in 2023, he was briefly on the practice squad before being a backup for the remainder of the year. He would start a couple of games when Mac Jones struggled, and in total, he threw for 1,200 yards with 6 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. So far, every guy on the list has been disappointing, despite getting ample opportunity to prove themselves. The next guy, though, didn't really get much of a chance to prove himself on the field, and that was Matt Corral. He was an extremely interesting prospect coming out of high school, as at one point he was committed to USC and was committed to Florida. Ultimately, he would end up at Ole Miss, where originally he would split time with John Rice Plumley, and then would eventually break out in 2020, following that up with a huge 2021 season. There was some first round buzz at some point, but eventually he was taken in the third round by the Carolina Panthers. He wasn't really able to do much in the 2022 preseason because he ended up suffering an injury. His season was over before it really began, and then he entered 2023 trying to take the starting job. Unfortunately, that was never going to happen, as they had literally just taken Bryce Young first overall, and there was no chance he was going to play, so he was sent to the practice squad. He was also sent to a dysfunctional organization, so from the time he was drafted, he was doomed to fail. After that, he ended up getting picked up to be a backup for Bailey Zappi with the Patriots, but his story would take another turn, as he apparently just left the team facility one day without telling anybody, and then refused to just show up for a couple of days. Ultimately, the Patriots would cut him, and then they tried to sign him to the practice squad, but for some reason, he didn't make it there either. In February, he signed a contract with the Birmingham Stallions of the UFL, and he looks to keep his football career going from there. Unfortunately, Corral has been a major bust, as he's literally not been on the field. Every year, there's an extremely polarizing athletic quarterback who many think will either be the next Patrick Mahomes or will become a complete bust. In 2022, that was Malik Willis. After originally being committed to Virginia Tech, he ended up signing with Auburn and was a backup to a couple of other talented players. From there, he would decide to transfer to Liberty, where he put up big numbers. He could both run and pass the ball and led Liberty to a decent amount of success. Because of that, he was seen as a developmental quarterback who could maybe one day be a franchise player. He ended up getting taken in the third round by the Tennessee Titans, and he was seen as someone who could maybe take over for Ryan Tannehill once he retired. Willis would get his shot pretty immediately, as once Tannehill was benched halfway through the Week 2 game against Buffalo, he would get his shot. Unfortunately, the playbook was very noticeably simpler, and he only threw four passes total. Once again, he was named the starter in Week 8, but only threw for 55 yards and a pick. The Titans still won, but he would struggle the rest of the year. He threw for 276 yards with no touchdowns and three interceptions, and he ended up playing in eight games. His only touchdown would come on the ground, and in 2023, the Titans replaced him. They drafted Will Levis out of Kentucky, and Malik would only go further down the depth chart. In three total games, he threw five passes. So far, it looks like Will Levis has already taken his spot, and Malik Willis has flamed out. That seems to be the name of the game for this draft class. The same thing can also be said for Desmond Ritter. Coming out of high school, Ritter was only a three-star recruit, but was exactly what Luke Fickle was looking for. He would improve more and more each of his four seasons there, and by the time he was a senior, he led the Bearcats to a college football playoff appearance. He was eventually drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the third round, but not many were sold that he really had what it took to make it in the NFL. He ended up competing in 2022 at Marcus Mariota for the starting job, and he lost it. But when Marcus was benched, Desmond got the starting role for the rest of the year. He made his debut in Week 15, as he threw for 97 yards and ran for 38. In total, he threw for 708 yards and two touchdowns, with 64 yards in the ground. Many expected Ritter to start in 2023, and he did. Head coach Arthur Smith just really couldn't get much out of him, and he was eventually benched in Week 8 and replaced with Taylor Heineke. But the pendulum would continue, as he became the starter for the last few weeks of the year, but was very disappointing. In total, in 15 starts, he threw for 2,800 yards with 12 touchdowns, 
and then had five more scores on the ground. He ended up getting recently traded to the Arizona Cardinals for Rondale Moore, meaning he'll be the backup to Kyler Murray. The final guy we need to talk about is Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett was one of those players who took advantage of the extra year of eligibility, as when he first came out of high school, he really wasn't that big of a deal. As a freshman, he led them to a huge win the day after Thanksgiving against Miami, and that's what ultimately knocked them out of the college football playoff. Pickett really didn't do a whole lot his next three years, but in 2021, he would explode. He had his fake slide, he helped Pitt become insane, and he was by far the most improved quarterback. He would end up being the only quarterback taken in the first round, and he would go to his hometown team of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was the backup for the first part of the year, and would eventually make his first start in Week 4, relieving Mitch Trubisky. Sadly, he threw three interceptions, and the Steelers lost. He once again became a starter later in the season, but despite throwing for 300 yards against the Bills, he had no touchdowns and an interception. After that, he would leave their next game against the Buccaneers with a concussion, and then had another one against the Ravens. He was inconsistent in his rookie season, finishing with 2,400 yards, 7 touchdowns, and 9 picks. Maybe all the gloves jokes were right. Unfortunately, nothing got better in 2023, as the Steelers had awful quarterback play. He was the starter going into Week 3, but would struggle mightily, ended up having two different injuries, and he really just didn't do anything. Despite being a first-round pick, Kenny has not lived up to his potential, and while he has been hurt a lot, he struggled when he was healthy, and honestly, there was really no point in taking him. The Steelers ended up signing Russell Wilson in free agency, and also recently got Justin Fields. Pickett is now headed to the Philadelphia Eagles, and while he has a lot of potential, he's probably going to just be a backup, and he'll go down as the biggest bust from the 2022 class. So as we examine all these quarterbacks, literally only one of them has done something, and that was the guy who was not expected to do anything, Brock Purdy. A lot of these guys were honestly not made to be in the NFL, though. A guy like Bailey Zappi was really just in a good system, and the rest of them either just had a really good arm, had one really good year, or had a lot of athletic potential. Honestly, the quarterback who I thought would be the best was Sam Howell, but honestly, he just seemingly lacks that it factor. I kind of saw that in his last year at North Carolina, but overall, it's just been a very disappointing class. I'm not quite sure what has happened or if any of these guys will really figure it out, but it has been disappointing, and why do you guys think that is? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down below, let me know why each quarterback hasn't made it, and if I should do this for another class or another position group. Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.